How long does it take to become a firefighter? This was my second biggest question that I had when I first decided that I wanted to pursue the career of a firefighter. And based off of the testimony and the questions I'm getting throughout the community, I know it's a cause of concern for a lot of candidates like yourself. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to answer that question within this video. Before going into the video, we need to cover something. So how are we defining time? Like when does the clock actually start? So just for this video, we're just gonna say, hey, when you decide that you know you wanna become a firefighter, we're gonna start the clock right there, and that's how we're gonna judge how long the process to becoming a firefighter actually takes. So to help answer the question of how long does it take to become a firefighter, there's three major topics that can influence how long your process to becoming a firefighter is. And the three are opportunity, your specific fire department requirements, and you and your preparation. When I say opportunity, what I mean by that is if departments aren't hiring, then no mm. one's getting hired. A perfect example is, you know, before I got hired back in 2015, there was like a five to six year period to where my specific fire department wasn't hiring firefighters. And whether that was due to its resources or its budgeting, if you were a candidate during that time period, you know, hoping, you know, and seeking employment with my particular fire department, there was a five to six year period where you didn't have any chances or opportunities to even test. So if you're pursuing a particular fire department that isn't opening their recruitment process, then your time frame or your process to the job can take that much longer. So opportunity can directly affect how long it takes a candidate to become a firefighter. So for our second topic, when it comes to your specific fire department, one thing that I teach candidates is, hey, make sure you do your research. You need to know what your specific fire department's requirement is to become eligible to test within that organization. So depending on your specific fire department, it can directly influence how long it takes you to become a firefighter within that organization. So let's kind of go over what are the requirements to become eligible for a lot of departments out there. So the minimum requirements are you must be 18 years or older, have a high school diploma or GED, have a valid driver's license, and have an EMT certification. That's the minimum qualifications for a lot of departments out there. But there are departments out there that require its candidates to have additional requirements to become eligible to test for them, whether that be a paramedic license or a firefighter one in or two certification or whatever the case is. So that's why you gotta do a great job of researching your specific fire departments that you have the desire to work for and see what the requirements are. So with that being said, there are fire departments out there that don't have many requirements. Perfect example is I tested for the Tucson Fire Department back in 2015 and they didn't require that I needed a firefighter one and two certification or an EMT certification or a paramedic certification to become eligible to test within that organization. That's why doing your research ahead of time for your specific fire departments you want to pursue is so vital during your process to becoming a firefighter. So the third major topic and most important topic is you. Are you gonna be that candidate that's one foot in, one foot out, not really committing to the firefighter testing process? Or are you gonna be that candidate that's you know 100% committed to the process, doing all the little things necessary to become an undeniable candidate to be successful within the testing process? So what I mean by that is, you know, are you gonna make sure you're researching ahead of time, making sure you know what requirements you need to obtain to become eligible to test within the organizations you seek to pursue? You know, and are you gonna be diligent about studying your firefighter written exam material and training physically and eating, you know, nutritionally healthy meals and, and fulfilling your fitness needs? Are you gonna be making sure that you're working on your interview skills daily and networking, you know, rubbing elbows with firefighters, riding along at fire departments with other firefighters and other fire departments and working with other candidates on your skills so you become dialed in and ready to perform come testing day. You got to make sure you're doing all those little things that we talked about in our previous video back in 2019 about the 23 steps to becoming a firefighter. Are you going to be that candidate that's truly 100% committed and driven to be successful as soon as possible when it comes to the testing process of a firefighter? Your commitment level can definitely influence how long it takes you to become a firefighter. The time frame of how long it takes to become a firefighter can vary. So it depends on your specific fire department and their testing process, whether the opportunity is there in general, you know, how long your EMT program is, do you need additional requirements? You know, do you have to go get a firefighter one and two, do you have to go get a paramedic? Because all that's gonna do is lengthen the time that it takes to actually become a firefighter. And then the biggest thing, remember what I said is you, you know, how diligent are you about your studying, your training, your preparation leading up to the testing process. So in this last part here, what I wanted to do was paint a clear picture for you. So I wanna give you my testimony and how long it took me to become a firefighter. And I talked with other firefighters I've been fortunate enough to work with, and I asked them the same question of how long did it take them to become firefighters? So for me, 
I ended up graduating from Sacramento State back in fall 2013. And then in 2014, it was spring, summertime, I enrolled into Sacramento State's EMT program. It was a nine week accelerated EMT program. So after I went through those nine weeks, I ended up passing the program, went on to take the national registry, passed the national registry, and then moved out to Arizona in the summer 2014. As I moved out to Arizona, I literally missed all the testing processes that happened within the area that I was a part of. So I was in Glendale at the time. So after missing all those testing processes, what I did is I started networking and kind of doing all the little things that I needed to do to help prepare myself for the day that I had the opportunity to test. That opportunity didn't present itself to about March 2015, where I tested for Tucson Fire Department and I tested for the Glendale Fire Department. So I went through all, both their testing processes. The Tucson Fire Department, had a testing process that was a little more extensive. When I mean by extensive, I mean just in time frame. Uh, you know, they had their own CPAT that we had to go down and take their CPAT there. They had their own written exam to where we had to take it in house, and then they had two interviews. But everything was gapped off by weeks, so it was a long process. Now the Glendale Fire Department, on the other hand, everything was just back to back to back. I mean, I think you had like maybe a week, two week period in between each phase. And they utilized the National Testing Network for their CPAT and their written exam. So that process was really fast. The Glendale Fire Department ended up calling me first and offered me a job. So that happened from, I tested in March, 2015, and then we were hired in June, 2015. So that process was that fast. So that's just kind of my testimony of when I started, so it was 2014 and I was hired by uh, June of 2015. So now what I did is I went through and I texted you know, some of my past clients and a couple of firefighters that I worked with and just got their testimony on the same topic. So for a firefighter Val, I asked the same questions of, you know, how long did it take? Why did it take that long? And if you can go back and do anything differently, what would you do? So Firefighter Val said, it took me three years to get the job because of self-development and because I learned that I had to dedicate every hour I had outside of my previous job towards various interview groups, workouts, and volunteer events. I would not change anything because those three years taught me a lot about myself and how hard I could push myself towards something I knew I wanted. And it taught me a lot about balancing life as well. The second testimony I got was from Firefighter Land asking the same questions. He said it took one year, two months to get hired, his test scores need to be higher, and he would have studied harder for the test. He's happy he didn't get hired right away, had a lot to learn about the fire service, being on my own, and the grind to accomplish the dream. So the third testimony I got was from Firefighter Arnes. He said it took him four years to get hired. As for the second question, to completely understand the culture and reason behind being firefighter fit. And the third question, he said, I would have spent more time speaking and writing with other fire departments instead of just want to completely understand the culture. The fourth testimony I got was from Firefighter Ott. And he said it took him two and a half years to get hired, a mixture of waiting for the departments that I wanted to work for to test, being told no by a department that I've given so much for was a little demotivating. And I met someone and decided to take a break and pursue school in the meantime until the next test that I was ready for to come around. So he said he wouldn't change anything. He said, I believe that everything happened when it's supposed to. And looking back, I'm glad and feel that I wouldn't have been as happy with the schedule of the other department I was denied. I was able to get a bunch of school out of the way, appreciate the job more, understand myself and better my relationships. So I'm happy with how things turned out and wouldn't change anything. As from the fifth testimony I got was from Firefighter Garcia. And he said, it took me almost two years for my process to when I finally got the call. I felt like I was in the right place in the right time. Right when I finished my schooling, I was able to get involved in the city I wanted to work for immediately and soon after they started to hire recruits. If I can change anything, it would be to network and be a little bit more outgoing in my personality. When testing, I kept everything very professional and formal and now I realize that it's good to be that way, but also let your personality show a bit so the crew can get to know the real you. And the last testimony I got was from firefighter Juanita and she said, it took me five and a half years to get hired as a full-time firefighter. I was a reserve for two and a half years then transition to medical services due to the amendment to automatic aid. So in reference to the question of why did it take her so long to get hired, she said, I wasn't 100% committed. I feared failure and I didn't have the confidence to push myself. So in reference to the last question of, you know, if she can go back, will she do anything different? Here's what she had to say. She said, yes, I would have been more committed and pushed myself beyond my limits. I was fighting myself. I had set my own limits as to where I thought I was capable of achieving. I would have stopped doubting myself and believed that I could accomplish anything. 
So her testimony is extremely powerful because I know a lot of candidates out there based on the, you know, the comments and the uh, emails that I've been getting over the years that this is a real thing when it comes to fear and, and doubt. So I put her testimony last because it shows how powerful it is. First of all, she's a woman. And when it comes to the fire service, there is a very small portion of women in relation to men. So she has that obstacle to battle. Plus, you know, she has her own doubts and fears, which is the biggest obstacle, because if you don't believe that you have what it takes to be successful, then your odds of becoming a firefighter are extremely low to none. So her, her testimony is extremely powerful. So if you're a candidate out there and you feel you have that fear and that doubt, just realize that the process is extremely doable. The biggest thing is it starts with you. Make sure you do your research. Make sure you know what requirements are necessary to become eligible. Follow all the steps that I teach you in the past video back in 2019 when it came to the 23 steps of becoming a firefighter. Do all those little things. Make sure you're diligent and persistent and consistent when you're studying, your training, your fitness, your nutrition all those little things so you can transform yourself into an undeniable candidate. And that's how you're gonna shorten that window when it comes to your process to becoming a firefighter. So to answer the overwhelming question of how long does it take to become a firefighter, it literally is dependent on your specific situation. You as a candidate, the departments you're pursuing, and how consistent and persistent you are with your studying, your training, and your overall preparation for the testing process. These last words I'm gonna say are extremely important, so make sure you really take it to heart, okay? So the key isn't to focus on the timing of everything. The key is to focus on setting yourself up in the best possible position to become an undeniable candidate for the fire departments. It's extremely important and powerful, okay? Really take that to heart because that's really what it's about. So in reference to how to become a firefighter, there's still a lot of confusion out there. I've been getting a lot of, you know, uh, emails and comments on our social accounts of candidates, you know, still having the confusions and issues of, you know, where to start or how to become a firefighter. So what I did is I developed a firefighter jumpstart program where I'm literally going to walk you through the process. So what I do is I cover the minimum requirements necessary to become eligible to test for a majority of the departments out there. I'm going to walk you through the CPAT and the necessary requirements to be successful through the CPAT. And I also introduce, you know, the most known interview method when it comes to firefighter candidates. And I introduce you to how to answer firefighter interview questions within an interview. And then I also developed a hundred question written exam that's going to test your skills on the basic concepts when it comes to a firefighter written exam. And then I also developed a couple weeks worth of free workouts that you can literally take and run with it. They're designed for you to look at them and see how you should start developing your own fitness program and your regimen so you can properly prepare yourself for a firefighter testing process, a fire academy, and a fire career. So make sure you go down to the description, check out our links to our programs, and take the steps towards your goals of becoming a firefighter. I'll catch you on the next one.